Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of The Theorist, here with your host, Vanity Pride. It feels good to be back. I know I was away last week on vacation, but, um, you know, I'm here uh, just to briefly sum up what happened this weekend. So I actually made the trip out to Michigan to a convention called Dokidokan. And uh, Dr. Bonehead actually lives in Michigan as well as, sorry, there was like something on my desk. Um, so anyway, what was he saying? Dr. Bonehead lives there as well as Admiral Handsome and Mr. Magic Al. They are all involved in the Tower of God dub project that I'm part of as well. And so, yeah, so Dr. Bonehead was hosting a few panels at that con and I had planned for a while to go to Michigan and surprise him. And then on top of that, I didn't know Admiral Handsome lived in Michigan as well. And I didn't know about Magic Al showing up to the con as well. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to see like all these dudes and, and meet them in person and all that. So it was really exciting. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I know it was quite surprising for them as well. Like a pleasant surprise, of course. <laughs> but it was really a good time. And I'm definitely excited to go back next year. I'm already planning that. I went with my best friend as well. So she's super excited about going back there again next year so that was fun plus if you guys hadn't noticed i cut my hair my my i also touched up my hair <laughs> i can't even talk i'm so tongue twisted um but i touched up my hair so maybe it looks a little bit redder in this picture i don't know uh or video <laughs> anyway <laughs> uh so as promised i am gonna do a twofer this week so i'm gonna cover last week's chapter which i took notes on and this chapter as well uh, for this chapter, I just got done reading it, and I actually want to kind of treat it as a live read, so I didn't really take notes on it, because, I mean, so much of the focus really is on the dialogue, because, like, I loved this chapter, uh, 312 of season two. It was amazing. The dialogue is great, and uh, just so much emotion behind it, and I'm just excited to, like, act it out, really. <laughs> I don't think I have much theories to offer, but... Um, yeah, like, I just love reciting those lines. Anyway, before we jump into uh, chapter 312, I do want to focus on 311. So that was called Hell Train Three Orders Part 3. So toward the beginning, we saw that Boro and Sachi both agreed with each other that they were going to reveal, like, slowly or little by little to bomb that Prince and Acroptor had died. They didn't want to reveal it to him just yet because, you know, he just found out about Kuhn and, I mean, Kuhn's not dead or we don't, we don't know what's going to happen to Kuhn. Uh, it is worrisome, of course. I mean, I'm hella worried because Kuhn's my boy. And, you know, I can understand how Bomb feels because Kuhn's like his best friend, right? So, you know, for him to be told, oh yeah, these two other dudes died, like that would be like way too much, you know? <laughs> Although I guess Bomb could use that to his advantage and, you know, get rid of Rachel that much faster, right? Because everyone wants that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, <laughs> moving past that, um, we do get to see Huaryun in this. And it had been some time since we'd seen her. So I liked the chapter in that regard, too, because we saw characters that we hadn't seen in a while. So it was cool to, you know, kind of see them make an appearance after some time. Uh, anyway, she kind of read Bomb's mind, you know, like, she's like, oh, I know you're gonna go try and find Rachel, and Bomb's like, what? How'd you know? And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, like, well, Huariun's a guy, she's gotta have that sixth sense, she's gotta have a really good intuition, so I'm not too surprised. But anyway, she does offer to help Bomb, uh, by taking him to where Rachel is. And around that time, Androsi shows up with Beta, and, uh, I actually do want to read that part of uh, Androsi because it, I thought it was really interesting what she said. And, you know, I, I kind of have some things to say about that. But first, we'll read her quote. You need someone to fight white, don't you? Don't even think of facing that monster and Rachel by herself. Plus, it's also my fault for not being able to stop what happened to Kuhn. So my thoughts on that were the fact that you guys remember when I was saying Androsi should have been one of the four to go retrieve that scale. Because remember, the four were uh, Rock, Coon, Rachel, and White. And I was saying it should have been Androsi. But the problem was that because of that hold that the Snake Charmer had on her, slash even like the Young Date of Zahard kind of had that hold on her, so she wasn't really able to do much or say much or whatnot. Um, so I feel like that held her back. And, you know, it kind of annoyed me because I'm like, dude, Snake Charmer, like... 
you should have been a little more lenient and allowed Andrasi to be one of the four. Like, honestly, Rock shouldn't have been there. Like, I know Rock is adorable and he's, like, comedic relief and all that. But, like, I think Andrasi would have played a much better role there. And I feel like what happened, like, with the whole, like, Rachel instilling that thing in uh, Kuhn's heart, I feel that could have been stopped. Like, Andrasi would have had, like, a better intuition to know, like, something like that was going to happen. Like, I don't know. This is this is all my thoughts on that. Like, I love Rock dearly, but I feel like Androsi would have played a better part. Plus, if Snake Charmer would have let her go, uh, if his objective was to defend her, right? Because he didn't want her being put at risk, right? And then if, if she was put at risk, he would have stepped out and fought for her, right? Fought in Androsi's name to protect her and, and defend her and all that. So I'm like, Snake Charmer, that would have put you guys... At three versus two, if something happened in retrieving that scale, it would have been Rachel and White versus Coon, Andrasi, and the Snake Charmer. Like, Snake Charmer, why didn't you think? <laughs> so those are my thoughts on that. But, I mean, I guess taking it more from Andrasi's perspective, I feel she kind of feels bad, you know, because she could have spoken up, too. Because I don't think, you know, she was kind of held back, but... I don't know. I feel like Andrasi could have fought through that and sh and she could have done something, right? And she could have been part of the four. And so I feel she she kind of feels bad and she kind of wanted to mix it up. She she kind of wants to make it up to bomb. Is basically what I'm gathering from from what she said there. Um so yeah, that that's what I had to say about that. So then, moving forward, um we then go to Jin Sung Ha, who of course was safe, like I predicted. I know I had also thrown out the idea like, oh hey, he could be absorbed by that like spaceship looking thing, which didn't end up happening, but he was okay in the end, so that's that's all that matters. Uh speaking of that ship though, he actually sends that thing flying and it nearly hits Moshini. And so <laughs> I thought it was pretty funny cuz Moshini kind of let out a cry. And then I thought it was really cool when Jin Sung actually challenged her, you know, and, uh, you know, he's basically asking her, like, oh, well, why aren't you fighting me and all that? And so I'm going to go ahead and read their interaction because I really loved that this chapter as well. Did you come here to watch your boys get slaughtered or what? You should just leave if you don't intend to fight. Don't be so impatient. The smell of blood hanging in the air is what gets me in the mood for a fight. Now, it's my turn. Why aren't any of Zahard's princesses normal? So I love that. And, I mean, obviously I know what happened in 312, but these notes that I took were before I even read it. So I was still toying with the idea of whether this uh, fight was staged. And, I mean, if that wasn't the case, you know, I kind of figured both of them would realize, like, oh, hey, like, let's not fight. Let's actually join forces kind of a thing. But that's all I want to really say on it, because we'll talk about what actually happened between the two of them uh, in the next chapter, which we will cover after I'm done with these notes here. So we then go to Mi Sang, who we also haven't seen in a while. So that's, that's what I was saying. Like, it was really cool about this chapter that we got to see characters that hadn't made an appearance in a, in a minute, you know? Uh, so she's actually keeping an eye on Rachel and Yura through this mirror thing. And so, again, I want to read an interaction here between Yura and Rachel. So, you know, Yura's basically, to sum up before we get into that part, uh, Yura's like, oh, hey, like, why don't you go rest in your room? Why are you out in this open space when anyone can attack you? Kind of a deal. And this is Rachel's response. It's okay. Nobody cares about me anyway. And Yura's like, what? Oh, I'm giving them the same voice. I should switch it up. <laughs> anyway, with Rachel. I ruined the bet with Bomb, and I didn't even manage to take that power with me. It was there, right in front of me. But now I've turned back into this ugly, pathetic... Ugly? Why, Rachel? You just don't get this. You spent your whole life being fawned over by other people because of that pretty face of yours. So don't act like you understand. It's not fair. I want to go. I want to go. I want to leave. Arlen... See, so that was interesting, too. Okay, what upset me a little bit about this chapter was the comments that people left. I mean, I'm always going to bash the comment section because, I mean, that's what I like to do. But, um, <laughs> so anyway, 
her saying Arlen is very intriguing and no one commented on that. I mean, I'm not going to scroll through like a hundred pages of these comments, but in the first three comments, all I saw was like the bashing of Rachel, okay? And it's just frustrating because I'm like, okay, like, what about when she said Arlen and then, uh, you know, there's something coming up, you know, I probably should wait until that scene comes up. I, I'll actually do that. Um, I will continue my rant momentarily. But anyway, Rock shows up precisely at this moment, and he's like, go? Go where, turtle? And he's like, basically, I'll help you go to hell. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool on Rock's part. And then, of course, he transforms back to his original gigantic form. And so at seeing this, Mei-Seng decides this is the time to go enact her revenge, right? Because she wants to avenge Akraptor and uh, Prince's deaths. So now that Rock is there, you know, she can kind of join forces with him and take down Rachel. But precisely as she gets up to go do this, White shows up, you know, and, and she was not anticipating this at all. Like, apparently her mirror thing was supposed to detect if anyone was around, but the mirror thing could not even detect White. Anyway, White goes on to say that, oh, me saying, like you know, you want to be a part of me and all that. So he intends to take her soul. And at that moment is when Andrasi shows up with Huariun. And I'm betting that Beta is around there as well. But okay, so now I can do my whole uh, uh, bashing of the comment section. <laughs> so if you look here at this image, there's a slash sound. We see Misang falling to the ground. There's blood spreading as... White turns around to face Androsi and Huariun. And so my initial thought is like, oh shit, like he just killed Misang, right? Misang is like this sweet, adorable, lovable little girl, you know, and she just died, it seems. But not one comment in like the first three pages that I scrolled through mentioned anything about Misang. You know, I saw a comment where they were poking fun at what Rachel said about like, oh, no one cares for me. And she's like, oh yeah, well, I, I don't know. Well, they, let's go with they. They were like, oh yeah, and the readers don't care about you either. But I'm like, okay, I feel like the readers do care in a sense because that's all they talk about is Rachel. All they do is bash Rachel. Not once are they like, oh my God, poor me saying she's dead. Like, no way, right? Like that's, I don't, I don't know. I don't get that. I'm like, there are other things you can comment about and talk about, and yet it's always Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. And I'm like, guys, you need to kind of, like, spread it out. Or at least, if you have to talk about Rachel, like, do that, but then kind of mention other things, too, because there's more to the chapter than just the one person, okay? And then I saw this other comment, too, in which they called Rachel a hoe, and I was like, well, she's not sleeping around with people, so technically she's not a hoe. I mean, you can call her a bitch like anyone else who is commenting about her like that, but hoe isn't the right term to use on her, just for the record, for the record. Um, but anyway, to conclude chapter 311, or episode 311, however you want to see it, uh, we have Rock aiming an attack at Rachel, of course, because he's dead set on avenging, you know, Coon, right? And then that's when Bomb shows up, and of course he is pissed off at Rachel, because you can see in this image here how his face is just angered and he's yelling at her. All right, so now that takes us to Season 2, Episode 312, or Chapter 312, uh, Hell Train Three Orders Part 4. So, of course, we get a little recap from last time. Again, Bomb's face when he's like, Rachel! <laughs> um, so then he's like, it's a good thing I found you before the fight started, Rachel. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to skip around some of the dialogue, you know, some of the unnecessary things. Because, you know, Rock's like, oh my gosh, you're awake. Uh, how are you feeling and all that. Um, and then I, I'm guessing this is Rock. He's like, hmm, too bad. I won't be able to devour her. <laughs> I mean, he still could if he wanted to, you know, even if Bomb killed her, like, Rock could still eat her, whatever. That sounds super awkward, but okay. <laughs> so, uh, Yura steps up to the plate, right? She's facing off with Bomb. She's like, did you follow Rachel here again? Why do you keep following her when she doesn't want to see you? You're sure, you sure are obsessive. Of course, that pisses him off because he's like, stay out of this. It doesn't involve you. And she's like, damn. 
And, you know, she's even shocked at how powerful Bomb has gotten. Because she even comments about that. So anyway, Bomb's attention is set back to Rachel, and he says, We agreed that whoever won the duel on the hidden floor would get the second thorn, right? But it looks like we both ended up losing. Andrasi was right. I should have never brought you to the hidden floor. Yeah, you should listen to Andrasi more often. Just saying, just saying. Andrasi is best girl. <laughs> I don't know why I'm shushing. Heart. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, continuing with Bomb's uh, thing here. Ultimately, Kuhn ended up like that because of my choice. So let's make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Let's decide this right here. Decide it? I want to fight you here. And we will end everything between us. I mean, it's so powerful, that, that choice of words, right? Because Rachel used to be his whole world. And now, you know, little by little, he started to realize she's not the greatest person, you know? Um... And so I think it's interesting that, you know, like, this was the final straw. Like, you mess with Kuhn, like, we're done, you know? And I really love that. Like, I love how SIU just made this work out, you know? Just, like, little by little, Bomb started to realize it, you know? Because I'm trying to think of a good example. But it's just, like, you know... If there's someone that you, like, love and trust a lot, like, and people are talking shit about them, like, you're not going to believe that. Like, you know, you need to have some kind of proof. And, um, obviously with that video that he was able to see, like, you know, he knew that Rachel did some shit and it's just unforgivable at this point. And, I mean, that's with Bomb not even knowing about Acryptor and Prince yet. Um, so... Yeah, like I said, powerful stuff that SIU has come up with, and I love it. So then we go to Mashini and Jin Sung again. And here, Mashini is doing this attack called Mashini Style Spear Skill Tres Cuemos, which I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Tres Cuernos, because I wasn't sure what Cuemos were. Like, I had to Google that. I felt ashamed. I'm like, I speak Spanish. I should know this, right? Um, but yeah, like, Cuemos wasn't coming up. But there was cuernos, and I was like, oh, okay, you know, like the M sometimes, like, if you put, like, an R and an N too close together, they look like an M. So that, that's my thought, especially because there's, like, three prongs to this thing. So it's got to be three horns. It makes a lot more sense. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and skip to the part. So they're, they're fighting here, and Moshini accidentally aims at that ship thing, and it's like, ah, princess, please aim a bit better. And she's like, ah, sorry, I didn't think it would hit you. I'm so sorry. Would you like me to bow to you? N no, princess, that's not what I meant. And then <laughs> Jin Sung is like, you must be blind. Then he gives himself a physical boost and does this attack thing called Shinzu uh, Piercer. He even manages a hit on Mashini, you know, kind of doing something like that. And as they are super close together now, he's like, what are you after? You act like you're attacking me, but you just keep sacrificing your own troops. You haven't put up a real fight this whole time. Is there something you need to tell me in secret? And then she's like, you finally figured it out. You people from the Ha family are always so slow. Which, see, I told you, I'm like, it's a staged fight. <laughs> like, I don't think he was aware of it until he started to sense, like, oh, well, she's not really putting up much of a fight, so she's obviously here to tell me something. Um, so anyway, back to Jin Sung. So what are you going to... So why are you going through all this trouble just to tell me? I really tried on that last attack, but you're just so damn strong. Hey, kid. My father sent three orders to the altar a week ago. Orders? Yes. One order was sent in secret, and the other was an order for us. Annihilate Fug. And the last one was... Completely kill all regulars on the hell train. And then Jin Sung's thoughts go to Viol, and he's like, really? Like, he's keeping, he's keeping a calm demeanor, but, you know, on the inside, you can tell he's worried. Why would Zahar want the regulars dead? What reason would I have to go this far, just to lie? The troops are already gathering at the last train stop. Of course, rankers can't interfere in the business of regulars, but the military seems to have found some kind of solution. As far as I know, someone that Fug values very highly is currently riding the hell train. You can't let that boy be put in danger, can you? And so he's shocked that she even knows, and he's like, how did you... 
And then we're back with Balm and Rachel. Starting with Rachel. I'm surprised, Balm. You getting angry at me. You never got angry at me, no matter what happened before. You must be angry because of Coon, right? But Balm, you have no clue. He tormented me for a very long time. I simply got the revenge on him that he deserved. I'm just competing to climb the tower like everyone else here. So why are you getting angry? Rachel, I just can't understand you. That's right. You would never be able to understand me. You hate every, or you have everything. You hate everything. <laughs> oh, that made me laugh when I read that. I'm sorry. Okay, backtrack. That's right. You would never be able to understand me. You have everything. A strong body, mind, and even the destiny to have been chosen for everything. That's why you're different from me. You'll never, ever understand me. So what if I killed Kuhn? I competed fair and square, just like everyone else. You'll never feel desperate. That's why you can act like you have friends. You don't know how desperate I feel. Rachel, I didn't come here to hear your excuses. I came here to get revenge as Kuhn's companion. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a second because I did want to mention this too. I know I defend Rachel, but I mean, it's sometimes ridiculous when she's pretending to be all innocent. And then the fact that she's always having to pinpoint like, oh, you have good luck. Oh, you have good looks. Oh, you have this. I'm like, girl, girl, like you're comparing yourself too much to people. And that's like your biggest downfall that you keep doing that, you know? So that's something that I wanted to point out about that. Continuing, uh, back with Rachel. Revenge, you, why? I just competed with him fairly. Why am I the bad one here? Why only me? That's right, everyone hates me, only me. They only call me a bad person. Don't be ridiculous, what's so different between you people and me? I was just unlucky, I, I haven't done anything wrong. So, right till the very end. You still have no idea what you've done wrong? If you hurt someone, you get punished for it. That's the fair rule that you're talking about, right? Why do you think you're the only one that rule doesn't apply to? Don't be ridiculous. Just don't be ridiculous. Why would you punish me? You stole everything from me. Why would you... What right do you have? And her, um, what's it called? The manta ray thing pops out. Of course, Bomb can't see it, but... You know, you can tell that that power is emanating from her. And then Bomb says, let's end this now, Rachel. And then we're back to Jin Sung Ha and uh, Mashini. How much do you know? Enough to know that you people need that boy. But the problem isn't that I know this. What? The real problem is that my father has noticed. The forces under my father's direct command have already quickly taken action. All right, and then we go to Floor of Testing. This is the last bit of the chapter. And guess who we come across? It's uh, Han Sung Yu. <laughs> I almost called him Jin Sung, God damn it. <laughs> Their names sound so familiar, or so, so similar. <laughs> um, and it was funny, because when I was taking notes uh, last chapter, I almost typed Han Sung Yu when I meant to type Jin Sung, and I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, with Han Sung here. My, my, that blind fish sure is jumping around a lot this morning. It looks like we have a very important guest. This must be the end of the line for me. And then it's a Zahard family messenger uh, who is a ranker named Red Brubia who showed up. The floor of the test total supervisor, Han Sung Yu, get down and listen to the command of the Great King, as well as trying to hide the identity of the irregular in the tower, a sin that you reported falsely to the government after manipulating that he was dead. It is a sin that you should not do as a supervisor involved in the examination process. You have committed such a serious sin, so you'll now be sentenced to death. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't think... Yu Han Sung is gonna die, you know, he'll find a way out of it, or I don't know, but, um, I haven't really put much thought into a theory for that, but like I said, I don't know that he'll die, and I love the fact that we're getting to see, um, present day Yu Han Sung, uh, it had been since, uh, friggin' first season since we last saw him, I mean, we probably saw him in flashbacks in season two, like, early on, but, I mean, seeing the real him, like, in the present time, it's been forever. 
So I, it's so good to see him again. I love it, you know? And now it's like I have a different thought on him because I guess after reading um, first season, you know, I kind of got a bad vibe from him. I was like, oh, shoot, well, like, you know, he killed Bomb. And, you know, I, back then I wasn't sure that Bomb was dead. You know, I was like, oh, he's going to come back. He's the main character. There's a season two. He's got to make a return. But yeah, like at first I wasn't too fond of Han Sung Yu. Like I loved him when we first met him in, in season one. And then later on when that happened and he was in works with uh, Lopobia Ren, I was like, oh, like, dude, no. And then, you know, Bomb's death happened and it's just like, no, like, why would you be part of this plan? But now, I mean, it's like I said, Fug at first was revealed to us as like the bad group. They're the villains. But really, they're kind of the heroes because Zahar isn't the greatest person. So, you know, with uh, Han Sung Yu being part of Fug, you know, that kind of makes him a good person in a sense. And I mean, it wasn't that Bomb got killed off, killed off. Like, it was a stage death. And, you know, it was kind of done in a sense to protect him, I guess, because if Zahar was going to try and, and do something to him when Bomb was just starting out, you know, that would have been bad, bad for Fug. But, you know, since they killed him off uh, and then, you know, trained him really well, I mean, it was to their benefit and also to bombs. So, I mean, that's the thoughts that I have on Yu Han Sung. Not so much of a prediction as to what will happen to him, but like I said, I mean, the the most basic thing that I can come up with is the fact that, like, I don't think he's he's going to die. Or even if he does go through some trial or, you know, some death sentence, like you know, I don't know, maybe a group of people will help him out or, you know, even he himself, he's powerful enough to like defend himself. So I think he could find a way out. And I mean, I don't, we don't even know if this messenger really is on uh, Yuhan Sung's side. Plus death was in like quotes. So like, what do quotes even mean? Right? It's not like a real death. Maybe it's like some fake death thing again. I mean, he's got to have or he's he's having quite a connection with like fake deaths. I mean, first bombs and now potentially his, right? So that that's kind of interesting there. Yeah, and then what else can I say? I mean, the highlight of this chapter was the whole bomb and Rachel interaction and then, you know, them about to get into a fight. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one. Yura and Rock know better than to meddle in that. And then uh yeah, so we saw what happened with uh, Jin Sung and Ma Shini. Obviously, she wasn't there to fight him. She was there to, you know, kind of give him a warning, like, hey, you might want to be careful with your Fu candidate because he might get killed off on, on the Hell Train. So, yeah. So that's pretty much it for this week. I'm going to have to skip on the uh, blog notes again. I feel awful. I just... You know, there was too much to talk about, especially because this was a two for chapter or two for review. I can't even talk. <laughs> But um, definitely next week, I will cover blog notes, I promise. So that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's always a pleasure. Oh, I do want to thank people too. Um, I want to thank all of you because this channel has now reached 108 subscribers. And I'm just like, whoa, I've surpassed 100. It's crazy. So it's pretty exciting. Um, you know, and I'm super thankful for that. You know, we, we keep growing and it's awesome to grow along with you guys. So like usual, you know, be sure to give a like, be sure to subscribe, um, you know, tell your friends, you know, if you have other friends that are into Tower of God, you know, have them come to this channel. Like I'd love to see your guys' comments, your friends' comments um, in regards to what you guys think will happen, your thoughts, your theories on what's happened so far. So anyway, hope you guys have a great rest of your week, a uh, great weekend as well, and I will catch you guys next time. Peace.